Romans chapter 14, that's our reading for today. I want to tackle the first 12 verses of this text. Let's jump right in and let's read it together, beginning at verse 1. Now, accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. One person has faith that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats vegetables only. The one who eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat. The one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person regards one day above another, another regards every day alike. Each person must be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it for the Lord, and he who eats does so for the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who eats not for the Lord, he does not eat and gives thanks to God. For not one of us lives for himself, and not one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or you again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each one of us will give an account to himself to God. You know, when a person comes to Christ, you know, elements of, of that person's background and culture and um, habits and tendencies, they, they don't just disappear overnight. I mean, that would have been true uh, for the Jewish Christian and the Gentile Christian alike. You, know, you take the Jew, for instance, under the law of Moses, you, you recall certain meats were forbidden, certain days were declared holy. But now in Christ, this abstaining was not necessary or observing certain days. None of that w was necessary now, but that's who they were. You know, the context of this chapter, I believe, and we're going to see this later on as we move forward, even into chapter 15, the context of the chapter is dealing with Jewish and Gentile Christian relationships, people coming from, from, from different worlds, but now one in Christ. You know, Paul begins in verse 1 by admonishing, essentially, to accept one another. He says, accept the one who is weak in faith. Who's the weak in faith here? Well, for Paul, it's the person who doesn't yet have a full understanding of God's will. If you go back, he says there in verse 2, one person has faith that he may eat all things. Well, that was his conviction. He could eat what he wanted. But he who's weak eats vegetables only. He wasn't fully convinced that he could eat those things, even though God had made no difference to him. You know, as a result of his background, when it comes to, to this idea that, 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 that he can eat all things, he's just not there yet. He, he's convicted at this point that it just violates his conscience to, to, to eat um, certain meats. So he can only eat vegetables. I want you to listen to verse 3. He says, the one who eats, he's the strong one here. He has knowledge. He understands that it makes no difference to God what he eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat. He's the weaker one here, not fully there yet. And the one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats, for God has accepted him. The issues that Paul is addressing here, they're, they're not matters of, of right and wrong, um, where God has legislated. He goes on in verse 5 to deal with the observing of days. These differences between brethren are, are matters of, of individual conscience. They, they were matters that, that God had neither required or forbidden. And while these brethren held different beliefs, different convictions, the one understanding that it made no difference to God what they eat, and the, the other not so much, and, and one regarding one day above the other, and the other seeing no difference in any of the, de in any of the days, hey, here's what they had in common. If you look at verse 6, Paul says this, he who observes the day, he observes it for the Lord. And he who eats, he does so for the Lord. For he gives thanks to God, and he who eats not, for the Lord he does not eat, and gives thanks to God. Both of these brethren, sincere in their convictions, but here's what they have in common. They were both striving to please the Lord. So they need not criticize one another, judge one another, hold one another in contempt, or look down on one another for these things. These were things that, that made no difference to God. I, I love verse 4. So such a relevant question for us. Who are you? to judge the servant of another. You're not their master. To his own master, he says, he stands or falls, and he will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand. In other words, the Lord is the judge. 
Well, I'll say it again. It didn't matter to God what they ate. It didn't matter to God how they regarded days. So they need not divide or despise one another or look down on the other as a result of one's convictions. In these matters, again, these were things that made no difference to God. They are not the judge, Paul says, the Lord is. So let's read verse 10, starting again. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or, or, or you again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each one of us will give an account of himself to God. Let, let's be clear uh, again as we close for this morning. Paul here is not dealing with matters of doctrine, not dealing in areas where God has legislated. We're dealing with matters of indifference to God, where well-intentioned brethren had different convictions of conscience. But, but let's leave this for this morning with this thought. We need to allow God to do his job and be the judge. In matters of opinion, they're just that. They're matters of opinion. They're not for us to judge or look down on one another in these things. And let's just make this point as well. Brother, we need discernment by way of knowing the difference between matters of doctrine and matters of opinion. And that takes knowledge. It takes study. It takes a commitment to knowing the Word of God. Let's be about that, brethren. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we're so thankful for this day and, and all our many blessings, Father. Father, we, we ask you to be with your people at Kenwood this week as we engage in a, a series of lessons as we strive to encourage and build our children up, especially Father, as we look to your servant Paul and his bravery and his, his right standing before you and his, his joy and, and happiness um, that certainly were not circumstantial but based on his relationship with you in Christ. Father, help us to strive to be more like your servant, Paul, who has left for us as such a wonderful example. Father, we ask that, that you would be with those of us who are hurting, who have lost loved ones, be with my grandfather, be with my mother and her sisters, and be with my family, Father. Father, we ask that you continue to be with our sister Jenny, that you would bless her, that you would give her strength, that you would give her the courage that she needs to fight. We ask that you continue to be with Ellie, be with Dad, and be with all those who are battling cancer. Bless them, Father. Father, we recognize that this world is not our home. And we pray for those among us and our families who possibly are not right with you, God, who once walked with you but now are not walking with you. Father, we pray that you would continue to be patient with them if it be your will, that they would see the error of their ways and make things right, understanding, Father, that we have no guarantees of tomorrow. Be with all of those who have left you. Father, we pray this day that you would bless us with opportunities to do good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.